I'll show you. We call the um, global human influence mapping explore. So in a lot of biology and earth science classrooms, the impacts that humans have on the earth, whether that's through building cities and roads and um, agriculture, um, is discussed pretty widely, especially in textbooks. But the problem is a lot of those really large scale changes are pretty hard to comprehend without actually seeing them with your own eyes. So what this app allows you to do is actually look at the maps of um, on the top left, you can see cumulative human influence. Um, so red areas would represent um, more populated or regions or regions where humans have made more of a mark on the earth. Um, and then you're able to essentially pick apart this data set. So on the bottom left, you can see population density throughout Europe. You can also see the extent of agriculture. You can see things like the extent of impervious surfaces. Um, and we're also able to look at these data on a national scale. Um, and so, I will warn you, sometimes the processing is a little slow, so this might take a minute. But as you can see, um, if you wanted to look at one particular country, Italy, for example, we're able to see the percentage of um, that country's land that's under high, medium, or low um, classifications of human impact. So starting to look at developed versus developing countries um, and the impacts that um, economic policy might have on land use and land cover change. Surface water change over the past 20 years. 
Um, so through this app, we take students through a series of different hotspots where we're seeing some particularly dramatic changes occur. Um, so as an example, you can see uh, actually a pretty iconic example, the RLC, as, it's, um, as it basically dissolves between 2000 and 2019. So the image on the left was from 2000, and this is what the RLC looks like as of now. We know that this is largely due to um, irrigation in the region. They needed to divert the water to um, provide hydrology for nearby agriculture, but this is obviously a pretty extreme um, ecological effect. Um, what we're also able to do is look at the surface water change data itself. Um, and you can see in the red, these are all regions where we've lost um, surface water extent over the past 20 years. So students can again look at um, how a scientist, for example, would characterize some of the changes that we're seeing. Um, as another engaging example, a few of our hotspots also deal with kind of hot topics like sea level rise, because that is a surface water change on Earth. Um, and you can see, again, look at some of the bottom islands here. This is as of 2000, and then they disappear um, on the edge as of 2019. Um, the Indian Ocean has one of the world's highest rates of sea level rise, so using these before and after images, we're really able to capture that and actually show it to students in real time. Um, and again, looking at things like um, how the data set characterizes it, you can see in the green that these would all be regions where we've gained water over time. So as you can see, it used to be lands, not anymore. And finally, as a, um, a particularly dramatic example of human influence on water change, this is the Balbina Dam region in um, the Brazilian Amazon. You can see on the left, this is 1984, before the dam was put in, and then as of 2019, this was the flooding that resulted um, from their construction, and about um, 1,200 hectares of forest were lost just because of the flooding from this dam. So through these examples and several other hotspots that we highlight here, we're really able to kind of take a deep dive in and show students what land use and land cover change actually looks like in real time, maybe in their communities and maybe in other regions around the world. So from here, I will turn it over to Rohan, who will be also demoing a couple of other apps. So I have three more apps to show you all. So the first one deals with urbanization worldwide. So the data set used in this, as well as I just talked about it, the data set used in this case is night lights data collected from satellites. So night lights data, as in just how bright the lights in an area are, are actually a pretty good indication of urbanization over time <coughs> it shows human settlement, because as an area is urbanized, they're gonna develop more civilized and more lights, etc. So um, this, in general, highlights a few areas that show really dramatic urbanization, and I'll be showing you, in especially, Cairo and Egypt. So one of the great things about this app is that it actually shows change over time. So it goes from 1992 to all the way to 2013. So over here in 1992, as you can see, um, the closer to red the color is, the more nightlights there are, and then the closer to yellow, and then even further to black shows even less. So in 1992, the area was developed in terms of nightlights in a few particular areas were constituted with red, but in general there was a lot of yellow and orange, meaning that the area was still not developed. However, as we move on towards 2013, you can see a dramatic increase in the entirety of northern Egypt, and not just Cairo, just completely expanding and becoming a huge center of, of traffic. So. Um, in addition, I'll stop. You can also click on any point anywhere and plot from 1992 to 2013 the night lights uh, just numerically. So uh, what this allows the students to study, especially as I mentioned multiple times, is urbanization, and especially in a time when climate change is such a pressing issue. This helps students break down and see where the areas that are most likely to be impacted are. And uh, I'll just show you this because we have time. Uh, in all these apps, if the data set extends worldwide, you can actually look up anywhere. So out in where we are now, that's pretty wise you out a little bit. You can see there's actually some pretty interesting trends here as well. So um, okay, 
So that's 1992. You can see that the southern and western areas are pretty red, but the rest has not really been yet. However, in 2013, you can see that even more towards the north, the southeast and the east, the area has really developed. So we think that this would be a good tool, especially as we continue to develop it, to show urbanization worldwide. Now, moving on to our next step, we have Population Explorer for worldwide population by countries. This is a simple app that just allows you to compare the populations of uh, different countries listed. So for instance, I'll compare Portugal, uh, Sierra Leone, and Brazil. And so as you can see at the bottom right, it just gives us a bunch of the graphs um, just of the 2015 population. And so this app, that's really all there is to it. However, this does show off the tool of just the ease of use to access data. So as teachers, or just as these apps are developed, we're gonna make sure that we make it as easy as possible for teachers to integrate these into their curriculums by giving them just the easy way to look. So over here, we're using a color palette that shows high contrast between the areas of high population in the dark blue and the areas of low population density in the sort of yellow beige color with everything in between, which we hopefully help those students see easier and be able to analyze their data easier. And finally, I'll be showing another app about the Amazon rainforest. Uh, this one more about deforestation as a whole. So this one will take a moment to load. But uh, um, so in all, in most of the other apps, we've used one, maybe two data sets. However, this app actually uses four different types of data. So it uses data on vegetation indexes, which uh, just using satellite imagery calculates the greenness, which is a good indicator of how the health of a forest or the size of a forest. So it takes the greenness and lets us track, track the um, forest area over time. Then it also uses, um, as the paper that was mentioned earlier from <laughs> Matt Hansen from UMD, it uses uh, their deforestation data to help us track deforestation as a whole. It uses biomass, which is um, the amount of like, living woody biomass, so living trees in the area, and it lets us track that over time to track deforestation. And then land cover, which is the different types of land that is being used, like. Uh, evergreen forests, to croplands, to vegetation mosaics. So um, this is still loading, so we'll give it a second. But for now, you can start to see just um, one of the data sets. I believe this is the vegetation data set. So the black shows that there's not a significant change in vegetation over time. The green shows that there is a gain. But as you can see, there's a lot of red in clustered areas, and that shows loss. So as we let the data sets load, I'll try to show you all the different types of graphs that we have here. So they're going to be loading on the left. So on the, this one up here, EVI anomaly over time, that shows the change, as I mentioned earlier, in vegetation, so in forest weakness over time. So we can see over time, I think I like an area that has actually seen somewhat of growth. But um, so this one shows us that in that area, the, the um, vegetation, the greenness area has been growing over time. For the next graph, we can see deforestation. So yearly forest loss, it shows that it's been growing over time. Uh, you can actually hide in all of our graphs because they're made with Google Charts API. You can hover over a specific point or a specific bar and check the value of that bar. Uh, this allows students, if they should desire to, or if teachers want them to perform more detailed analysis to get the actual numbers for each data point. And then down here we have biomass lost over time. So as you can see, that's also growing. And uh, finally, I'll show the different data layers that we have. So you can see a lot of different views in a single app. So. Now I'm just turning off most of the layers so I can show you all just one. All right, so this one is the most, this one that started loading first. It's the vegetation index that I already explained. On top of that, uh, there are red dots here. I'll just, I'll show just those. So just the red dots are areas of forest loss. You can see they're especially clustered towards the bottom right. Uh, after that, we have the biomass map. So then we have the key down here as well. So depending on the milligrams per hectare of biomass that has been lost, or the biomass that is there over time, then below that we have this graph. So um, this graph actually uses more than one data set. It uses the biomass map for us to track the area that we have biomass. And then it also uses the Hanson forest loss layer from earlier. So using those two uh, data sets, we're actually able to track the biomass, the exact the exact biomass lost over time, leaving us a good way of putting quantitatively how much um, life we're losing in the Amazon due to deforestation. <coughs> and finally, we have different um, times of land cover. So you won't be able to see a huge difference in these, um, in, except in some specific areas, 
But as I mentioned before, we have another key down here telling us the different types of land that cover from evergreen godly forests to grasslands to savannas to croplands. And you can select each individual view over time and see uh, what the land at that was and compare them. And this app lets you select any of the polygons. And I should cover that. So each of the selections that it's making are actually areas belonging to the indigenous peoples of the Amazon. We wanted to make sure that they were highlighted in this app because this is their home. Their ecosystem is being destroyed by deforestation. So it's important to track them to, check, to make sure that their way of life, in addition to the environment, is being protected. Thank you.